I'm your host, Logan 23. You're joining me for Vampire Girl 2, Chapter 20. Your world is a haze of heat and pain. Orin stands over you, gloating as a sword cuts into your arm, again and again. You try not to cry out, but you can't help the screams and tear from your throat. How did Madrid ever love this monster? You can see in his eyes that he takes pleasure in your torture. Both of your forearms are lined with red ribbons of agony as he grins down at you. Your beloved Prince of War has arrived. I wonder what he'll do when he sees you. His words sound distant as you slump in the chair you're tied to. But the druid speaks to the crowd below, demanding their surrender, and your heart sinks. He's gonna do it. Ben loves his kingdom, but I know he won't. can't watch me suffer. Ben is strong, but he knows he can't fight powerful magic with just his fists and blades. Orin rounds on you as he threatens the Prince of War, cutting once more into your flesh with his impossibly hot blade. You know that this grisly display is meant for Fen, the druid is using you to taunt him. My people need me to be strong. No, Fen needs me to be strong, I'll... Scream and cry. Illusion of choice. You wish you could grit your teeth and suffer the, the druid's torture, but you scream in anguish as new wounds appear on your arms. As much as you hope Finn can't hear you from so far away, you suspect your screams carry just as easily to his vampire ears as Orin's voice. Please, Finn, don't throw your kingdom away from me. Orin will never stop. You wish you could shout that, that to him, but you know you can't form the words. Suddenly, you hear Finn's voice rising above the crowd as he calls to the gathered troops and the people of Stonehill. They all want to fight for me. The sound of his voice uh, as he shouts his rallying cry comforts you, but then you hear the army charge and dread what's to come. What if Orin won't back down? I'm still hostage. He'll threaten me the moment Finn gets too close. Orin steps back from the end of the walls and the army rushes to fight. I should have known that demons care for nothing. He stands near you now. And you know you have the opportunity you need. Now's my chance to... I'm gonna go with, uh... Headbutt him and take him down myself. Without any warning, you slam your head into his brow. Orin stumbles back, momentarily stunned by the shock and pain. What the... Use the distraction to throw your chair you're bound to over the edge of the wall. There's no plan... And no way to stop your fall. You're still tied to the chair as you plummet towards the earth below. I won't be used as a weapon against Finn or a pawn in their game. If I die, it'll be on my terms. You brace yourself for the fall, knowing that if you survive, you'll be breaking a lot of bones. With a little more pain at this point, right? The ground rises up to meet you, and you close your eyes. And then you begin to slow. Yami? You look around for Yami, but there's no sign of the dragon. Instead, the very wind seems to be slowing your fall. The chair gently touches the ground, and the air druid lands beside you to begin untying your restraints. Varys! You've got to teach me that. In due time, Midnight Star, Yami's power rests within you, but right now I'm here to apologize. I'm sorry I did not arrive in time to stop Orn from harming you, from creating this madness. You wish you could throw your arms around him the moment you're untied, but pain still racks your body. And suddenly the air around you grows cold and a mist is carried towards you on the wind. It is Metsy. The water druid appears before you with Wadu coiled around her arm. Finally you show yourself. She raises a silver sword, as sleek and deadly as everything else about her. Ferris raises a hand. No, Metsy. The Midnight Star is not our enemy. We need her. She is our only chance at a peaceful future. A future you want. The same future we all want. You do still seek peace, don't you? Of course. Why else do you think I would do such, such horrible... 
She shakes her head as if brushing away a weak moment and then resumes her battle stance. Metsy's sharp eyes turn on you and you struggle to keep your voice, even though through the pain. Metsy, I... Still want peace more than anything. The gaze falls to your arms and she frowns. Even after all that has happened, do you think there is still a chance? I do. Nods thoughtfully and begins to turn away. The vampires are near and they will be upon us soon. He gives you one final lingering look before nodding farewell to the Druid of Air. I hope you are right about her, Varus. And with that, she's gone, once more becoming mist and slipping away on the wind. Where she stood lies the broken pieces of your sword. You carefully lift the hilt and inspect the shortened, broken blade. I must leave. Already? He nods and Zira lands at his side, stretching her massive wings as she readies to carry him skyward. Ooh! Be safe. I will do all I can to help both sides live to the end of this battle. With the wind beneath him, he rises towards the phoenix, who flies overhead. You watch for a moment as the two great birds lunge at each other, but then you feel a twinge of dread. Something's wrong. Somehow, in that moment, you know that Finn is in trouble. Mm, I'll charge into battle at full power. Grip your broken sword as tightly as you can manage and run towards the fray, unwilling to waste any time. As you approach the castle, you're forced to weave between the vampire shades and fey that are locked in combat. A fey soldier spots you and tries to swing his blade at your legs, but you block his sword with your own. I'm not your enemy. Before he can even register what you've said, a vampire warrior sinks his spear into the fey man's back. You continue to run through the battlefield, drawn towards Fen. This needs to stop. Finally, you reach the area where Fen and Orin are battling at full force. Riku and Zira clash overhead, tearing at each other with their own talons. Finn and Baron lunge at the fire druid, their inhuman agility enough to outmaneuver his brutish strength. He's alive. Baron leaps at Orin, but the druid shields himself with a sword, slicing into the wolf's paw. <laughs> Baron. The wolf falls, whining in pain. Then Fen roars in anger. He attacks with more ferocity than before, but the druid matches every blow. Oh, did I hurt your mutt? He pushes Fen back. The Prince of War is tiring. You can see sweat beating on his brow and his eyes seem distant. Orn is too strong. Fen falls to his knees and you know he can't win this fight alone. You run forward, jumping between the two men. Stop. Orin gives a harsh, cold laugh. Did the vampires stop? When they were slaughtering my people, when they murdered my queen. Hmm. You can't go on like this. The cycle of violence will never end. If the Fae overthrow the vampires and treat them as the Fae were treated, the cycle will only repeat. The vampires would suffer just as the Fae do now. Am I supposed to feel sorry for the people that subjugated my kind, my own flesh and blood? No, but this war will never have an end until one of you wipes the other out completely. At what cost of your own people, Orin? Orin snarls, shaking his head dismissively. He rushes at you sword raised, and you wonder just how badly he can maim you without risking Yami's death. Finn is back on his feet in a fluid motion that pushes him forward, mustering the last of his strength as he knocks you free of Orin's cruel sword. The blade catches him in the gut, you hear a sickening slice as the blade sinks into him. No! The Prince of War falls, his body scorched and bleeding as you gather him in your arms. A Baron limps over to you both and whines, licking his master's face as he tries to rouse him. You can feel his life slipping away as he struggles for breath. His face grows pale, and he shudders. Fenris is dying. Stay with me, Finn. Please stay with me. This is all my fault. He's dying because of me, because I brought the druids back, because I... 
The shadow is cast over you as Orin looms overhead, sneering down at Finn as his life ebbs away. No, this is not my fault. It's Orin's. He did this. You hate to leave Finn, but you must. Every instinct in your body screams for you to rise and fight. You kiss Finn's brow as you lay him gently to the ground, and you rise to your feet. Broken sword in hand, your tears dry as your grief turns to wrath. How can you do this? How can you destroy so much life? Your body thrums with a foreboding power, and a shadowy horror settles gently around you. Words form in your throat that aren't yours alone. Something else speaks through you. This is not why you were chosen. This is not your duty. You point your shattered blade at the druid as your illusion falls away, revealing your true fey appearance. What is this? You have failed your people. You have failed yourself. Mm, I'm gonna do it. Use my power in it now. You. The flames that wreathe him are no longer his to control. They look hungrily at his skin, searing his flesh. Orin screams in pain and terror as, the, for the first time, the fire no longer obeys him. Or Steam slips from the cracks in his armor. Or perhaps it's smoke. The flames burn blue, now hotter than any he command. Not. Orin scream is terrified, agonizing wail. It's more animal than human as he collapses to his knee. As the fire finally subsides. Worthy. The druid kneels at your feet, his face twisted with anguish and fear as he forces it to experience the pain and helplessness you felt. You don't stop to wonder. How many burned like this? With a number of corpses left blackened and charred in his wake. They are likely beyond counting. Above you, Riku cries out before dissolving in the ash. No, you will not take Riku from me! The spirits of our people belong to no one. You slash your sword, and the blade is made new again. Wow. It has one notable difference. It glints in a midnight black, no matter how the sun strikes it as if absorbing light itself. The edge of your wicked blade streaks across Orin's throat, and he collapses at your feet as his life bleeds from him. As his eyes lose focus, a golden glow emerges from him like an ember drifting skyward. Riku... The beacon of light floats away, seeking a new druid, this time one who is worthy. You raise your sword as it fades into the horizon, and it's as if the seam of a midnight is cut into the afternoon sky. It takes form, and the pitch-black dragon extends its wings. You blink and feel the power fade from you, the black nothingness. Within you roils and churns, and finally the dark energy dissipates on the wind. Everyone has seen my true form, and many of them just saw my power. It's time for me to claim my title. Yami is truly reborn. Let go of your fears and doubts. The Midnight Star has returned. Oh, wow. Hello there, Yami. Roar. All are gaping at the dragon overhead. The fae cry out in wonder and terrified awe, shouting praises and pleading for mercy as they're faced with the truth. The vampires throw down their weapons and flee, unwilling and unable to face the one who unites the spirits. A jet of blue flame erupts from Yami's mouth as he circles overhead. It's done. It's over. For now, at least, it's all over. You're so consumed by the power flowing through you that it takes a moment to become grounded again. Baron's cold, wet nose nourishes against your palm, and you're startled back to yourself. Finn. You kneel beside the fallen Prince of War. His breathing is shallow and faint. His skin is ashen. His lips are tinged with blue. 
Ben, just hang on a little longer. I'm not going to let you die. With the power that still lingers within you, you're able to lift him on your shoulder. You set your sights on the castle and begin your race against the clock as your lover's life fades from his body. I'm with you, my Carissi. Just stay with me. Okay. <gasps> so with that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below, links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my channel. Um, so we only have uh, just a couple chapters left of Vampire Girl 2 and one of Frisk Me. So stay tuned for that. Sorry about being a little uh, off today. Basically, I was uh, fighting a what I can only claim as a stomach virus, which really sucked the productivity out of me today. So, oh, catch you all later. Peace.